That's why we test things, people. <laughs> fellow T-Dubbers, Brad from Bradley Performance Products again. In today's video, we're gonna be showing you the installation of one of our new engine oil cooler kits. Let's get started. So the parts that we're gonna be using today come in the kit. Start over here at the left. You will need a couple generic metric sockets. I think we've got a four and a five here in the Allens, an eight millimeter, a 10, a 13, or 10 wrench. Pretty basic stuff. You'll have a couple mounting clamps. You'll have the support bracket. Then you have the cooler itself. Have the line adapter. Two different lines that have two different bins in them. Some hardware for mounting the oil cooler to its bracket. And a few fittings for the hoses. And these things do come with some generic fittings that we don't use so don't ask me where these go because we don't use them so just keep them throw them away put them in your bolt bin only thing i think we're going to use out of this kit are the fittings all right let's get started we're going to start by leaning the bike over so that there is a minimum amount of oil lost out of the oil filter housing and we're going to just take off this oil filter housing real quick Okay, we've got a few rags here in case we have a mess, but hopefully it's gonna be minimal. But all we're doing is replacing this cap with this new one. It does come with two new O-rings. You'll need to make sure that they stay in there. If they tend to fall out, you might put some grease in here, make it hold the O-ring. So something like this. Now the O-ring will stay. Okay, so we're going to remove the OEM oil filter housing cover. Remove the filter. Remember that the hole goes out away from the motor like this because your new one doesn't have that little peg. So just make sure we put it back in the same way. So it goes like this. And we're going to reassemble it. We're going to make sure that these bolts get torqued properly because you're going into a cast aluminum case. They're very easy to strip. And this motor, we already know when we received it from the seller, this lower bolt in the case here was stripped. So we are going to have to heat cool this one. So be very careful and torque these to spec. Okay, next, you can do this in whatever order you want to. I just chose to work from the bottom up. I'm gonna put the lines on. The fittings are different because there are different hole diameters on each end. You could route this several different ways and we've tried. One way is to go over the exhaust, but I just didn't want to leave anything outside of the exhaust. The way I have chosen to route these is to lay the hose inside of the skid plate and connect here and come up to the cooler this way and I'll provide this clamp that holds it here next to the starter so everything is tucked in here nice and protected. But we'll start by putting, make sure you have a, a gasket on each side of the hose on both sides. Start by putting the curved one in the top hole. And then the straight one in the bottom hole. So the orientation will look something like this. Curve the lines 
I'm gonna lay them down into the skid plate. And they're going to lay something like this. Now, if you have the stock skid plate, you still have plenty enough room here to put these hoses behind that skid plate. And of course, it's the reason that we replace them. They're so thin, they're like bending a Coke can. And so, like I said, there, there is plenty of room, but just to give it that little extra, you can just grab a hold of the stock skid and just give it a, a little tug right there and it, and it just literally bends out. And uh, to make sure that you feel like you have enough room where you're not pinching the lines or anything like that, but they, they do work on both. Now we're gonna take our mounting bracket and the cooler. The cooler is gonna to mount to the bracket in this fashion with the fittings inboard towards the frame, towards the mounting points like this. We're gonna take these six millimeter by 20 and go through the front and then put on a washer and a nylock nut on all four corners. So just to show you, we don't want to tighten these all the way up because we want to keep this cooler rubber mounted. So we're not pinching the rubber out of this. We just want to get these nylock nuts where the bolt is getting into the nylock. So just tight enough to be about flush or a half a thread up where it's gonna stay, but we wanna keep this thing rubber mounted, so we're not gonna tighten them down all the way. So now here we have our assembly. So now you have an, an upper port and a lower port. The assembly's gonna sit right here, just like a radiator would on a liquid-cooled motorcycle. And so now you have an upper hose and a lower hose, and we're simply going to Connect them in these two positions with the provided fittings. This part takes a couple hands because we need to slide these mounting brackets over the frame and they both go under the horn bracket. Slide this on. Slide the assembly up into place, like so. And install two of the supplied nuts. Okay, so now we have loosely installed everything. And so what is left to do is all the tidy up work. So we're going to get this where we want it. I generally try to keep it slid up all the way, away from the exhaust. We're not gonna tighten down any hoses until we get them routed the way we like it. And then we're gonna start tightening everything down and snugging all the lines. So we're gonna put this P-clamp here to hold the hoses together and I get, I generally put it here off of this starter bolt so I'm going to remove that. Okay so just so that I'm clear that I'm being clear with the orientation I'm running I've done it several different ways but I run the top line that is curved it has a tight bend and then it, as it goes up the frame, it is on the left. It is this one. I'm making a tight bend here. I'm keeping it on the left and it is going to the top. The straight hose here, I have making a larger loop and it ends up on the right side and it goes to the bottom. Now I've placed this P-clamp here and I'm gonna hold these just north of the starter. I'm gonna put this bolt back in. Okay, I'm to the point now where I want to start snugging things down. I like the way it looks. I'm away from the exhaust. I'm away from anything that's going to chafe on the hoses. So I'm going to start snugging these down. 
As far as the torque spec here, I know some of you guys are gonna want an exact torque spec. This company that builds this part for me doesn't provide one. This is aluminum and it's cast, and this is about a 10 millimeter thread. In my personal opinion, I don't think you should be past 12, 14, maybe 15 pounds at the most. But just good and snug because these lines, the washers have the rubber coating on them and they seal even when they are left loose, I have found. Okay, so as you can see, it is now very rigidly mounted. It's in place, it's tight. I've got clearances. I wanna double check my routing, double check my work. Now, how much oil is in this thing? How much should you add? Not much. We ran one of these and then removed the entire system and drained it into a Ziploc bag. And it was about enough to fill up the cup of your hand. And it's literally, the ID of these lines is very small and the ID in the passages is extremely small. Well, why is that? Because it's easier to cool a small diameter of oil than it is to cool a, a mass of oil, obviously. So all these coolers have very small passages in them. So there's not much in here. The last few that we've done, we didn't have to add any oil. There was one where I added a couple ounces. So just when you get done, start it, warm it up, stand it back up, check it, make sure you're still within your marks and add some if you need to. Okay, so like I always say, go back, double, triple check your work. Double check all your fittings, all your mounting bolts. If you need to move clamps around, just to make sure you don't have anything pinched, anything rubbing, do that. Make sure everything's snug. Start it, make sure you don't have any oil leaks. Make sure that you got all your oil seals in the right grooves and staying correctly. Double check your oil level. Now I actually did need to add a little of this one because it was already kind of low. So I added some. And just to let you know, I've had questions even from customers about how do you check this? So this is checked with the engine off and it's standing up and balancing. And this should be where I have found that it should be when it's cold. You know, you wanna be between the two recommended marks when it's cold and due to expansion rates under heat, then you'll find that if you're in this region cold, then as the oil gets hot and expands, it will go ahead and, and fill up and you'll see very little uh, of the metal tang in there showing once it's warm. And we're just now getting these in and getting them available. And we have determined that there is quite a bit of a temperature drop from one side to the other. They do function very well. They would function better at higher speed, obviously. If you're a road rider, you're gonna see a greater drop in oil temperature. If you ride in the woods at very slow temperatures and you're just crawling around and you don't have airflow here, then the only benefit that you're getting is from the heat that just naturally radiates out because you don't have airflow in here. So it's all just a benefit. I hope that was easy enough and understandable enough. If you have any questions or comments, hit me down below, hit the subscribe button. I appreciate it. Appreciate all the business from you guys. We're as busy as ever. It's all thanks to you. Thanks again.